The use of hair rigs really came to the fore back in the 1980s by specimen carp anglers. The beautiful thing about hair rigs is that you were able to use larger hook baits. It completely exposed the hook and it was when we really started to understand about how big fish like carp and bream, bottom feeding fish, how they actually suck the bait in and try to eject it. And that is the key to hair rigs. We get asked lots of questions about when are the right times to be using hair rigs and for me it's just really about using bigger baits and it's mainly when we're targeting bigger fish like carp and bream. Now we always used to really use them when we were fishing with a method feeder or a pellet feeder or that style of feeder. Ones where it's really a self hooking way of fishing so that you literally set your trap you get the rig out there, put the rod down and really just wait for the fish to hook itself. But over the last few years we've started using hair rigs in different scenarios where lots of you have probably heard about where we fish with hair rigged worm on even on natural venues. So we're using hair rigs now on a variety of different venues, not only commercial waters. Now lots of people tie theirs in different ways but for me you know I spent quite a lot of time over the last eight or nine months really looking at the way that I, I tie my hair rigs. There's loads of social media platforms out there where there are videos out there, there are magazine articles about how different people tie their hair rigs and this is really the way that I've just kind of settled on and I've been really really happy with the results since we came out of lockdown, since we could actually get back out there fishing. I tie my hairs really just the same as most people but I don't like to use any sort of rubber sleeving actually on the hook itself. I like to whip the line right the way down the shank of the hook so that it actually holds the, the hair in place all the time. The problem I've had with the sleeves on the hook is that I don't find that they're very durable you know sometimes when you are catching fish they can easily split and if they split and come off then it means that your hair rig's not working effectively so then there's some downtime there where you've literally got to take the hook length off and put another hook length on again and it really just slows you down you know and when you're catching fish the last thing you want to be doing is just constantly re replacing hook lengths so I found that by whipping the line right the way down the shank of the hook right down to the bend it actually keeps the hair in place and it's a lot more durable now the distance between the actual actual bend of the hook and the actual hair, the band or the bayonet, depending on what you're using, then I like to have a gap of about two millimeters. Some people will argue that a, long, a wider gap will be better in certain scenarios and that may be the case. However, when you're fishing lots of different venues, I find that about two millimeters is just about right. Now one of the most commonly used ways of using a hair rig for me is to use a band. Now the great thing with a band is that it allows you to present different baits in different ways. Now the most common one is really by using a pellet banding tool like this one. That will simply expand the band round virtually any size pellet so if you want to fish a hard pellet the band is a great way of doing that you can also band dead maggots as well that can be really effective especially in winter you can band up to two three four five maggots even dead maggots within a band and that way it just keeps your hook nicely exposed so that could be a great way of catching fish especially in winter and a lot of people don't realize that you can actually use a band for fishing with corn as well by pulling the band actually into the corn with um, with a baiting needle with a hook on it that will allow you to stretch the band that will pull itself into the corn and hold the corn in place so when you're fishing with a band that is probably the most flexible way of presenting maggots corn and pellets as well so that is really really common in a lot of the fishing that i do the use of boiler pins is very very common now and I always love to fish with wafters, boilies, pop-ups, anything like that, any sort of a hard bait like a boilie. The bayonet, as some people refer to it as, or a boilie pin or boilie spike is ideal. Certainly if the wafter or the boilie is nice and soft, it's got to be soft enough for the pin to actually penetrate the boilie. Some boilies are just simply too hard to do that and that's when you might start thinking about going down drilling pellets and that sort of thing which is a little bit more complicated but the boiler pin is very very common and I love to use that when I'm trying to present wafters, boilies and that sort of thing. Super stops are another flexible way of fishing with hair rigs. Now they can be great for presenting baits like single corn and what I tend to do is I have two different lengths of super stop hair rigs made up within my case that I carry. 
I have some that are just literally long enough to present a single grain of corn. By doing that, it just means that you're only allowing a couple of mil between the outer edge of the corn itself, once it's mounted on the hair, and the actual bend of the hook as well. But I also carry some that are twice as long, and that is so that I can present multiple baits, like three or four pieces of corn even. Some people call those stacks or stacking baits, and they can be really good in winter when you're not actually feeding anything when you're fishing bomb and corn or any sort of method like that because you're fishing a nice bright bait like corn obviously a single grain of corn is very visible in clearer water but as you can imagine it's nowhere near as visible as two or three or even four pieces of corn so that can be a great winter tactic it's been proven that on occasions soft pellets on the bomb can be a lot more effective than hard pellets and you know this is something it's a trend that we've seen over the last year or two where even if you're feeding hard pellets by fishing a bomb over the top of that but with a soft pellet on the hair then that can catch you extra fish and that's another reason why i carry these super stops because they can be ideal for presenting these larger expanders or ready soaked or hookable pellets which they can really catch you the extra fish sometimes and in a lot of our, certainly in the skimmer and bream fishing side of things, it's not uncommon now for us to hair rig worms. We do this on natural venues as well, um, but when we do that, we tend not to do it so much in conjunction with fishing the method feeder or a pellet feeder. It's usually with more conventional cage feeder tactics, and that's when we've got longer hook lengths in the 50 centimeter sort of um, uh, length, and sometimes shorter. When we're fishing for bigger bream, you can present two pieces of worm which means that, you know, certainly if you're fishing at range, it just means that the bait is gonna be a lot more um, durable and tougher, and it's much more likely to stay on the hook when you're punching feeders out into a strong headwind or if you're fishing at range. And it just means that the whole hook bait and everything is a lot more durable. So hair rigging worms can be fantastic for bream. Now lots of people ask about the scenarios of when we should use hair rigs. Now for me, I love using them in conjunction with self-hooking ways of fishing or self-hooking methods like the method feeder, the pellet feeder. For me, it's a no-brainer. There are occasions, don't get me wrong, certainly in winter when you might want to scale down if you're fishing for F1s, for example, where um, a, a normal um, scale down hook, like a size 16 hook with a single maggot on or two maggots hooked conventionally, can be slightly better but that can be quite specific to certain venues and that lends itself a little bit more to f1 fishing and that sort of thing but there are scenarios when bigger carp can be caught like that but for me if i can get away with a hair rig those are the occasions when i will use them now two key advantages to fishing with hair rigs things that a lot of people don't talk about is that one of them is it can actually help reduce line spin. Now I've seen people fish with single grains of corn. Now when you first hook the corn, depending on how you hook it on a conventional hook, as you would hook it normally, if you're, if you're fishing a pole for example, then that can be great when you cast it out there. But as we all know, corn, depending on how tough the actual piece of corn is and how uh, what, what the diameter of your hook is and the size of your hook and that sort of thing, it's quite easy for the piece of corn to become offset or for the hook to slide slightly to one side. And then when you're gonna retrieve and reel in, it can be a nightmare for causing spin-ups. I mean, I've seen lots of people do it and I used to do it a lot. I used to reel in and the, the hook lens all spun up like a little pig's tail um, and it, it's just so annoying and it quite often means that you've got to change that hook length. Hair rigs can help reduce that because the corn isn't actually, I keep referring to corn, that is the main bait that I really fish with on hair rigs, that's a more durable hook bait. Um, but it can apply to other, uh, other baits as well like worms. It just helps reduce that spin up because it's not actually presented on the hook, it's underneath the hook on its own individual piece of line. And the other time when I like to use hair rigs is if small fish are a problem. If you can imagine, if you were fishing, say you were fishing one inch or two inch long pieces of worm, or even three inch pieces of worm and they were mounted on the hook, if you've got small fish in the peg, even if they're two, three, four ounce fish, they can still kind of get that bait in their mouth. And if they can get that bait in their mouth, they are gonna be able to get the hook in their mouth as well. However, by fishing worms especially uh, on a longer hair, then what you can actually do is present a bait on there that might be two or three inches long, but then the actual hook itself might be another inch away from that in total. So what you're finding is that those smaller fish can actually get get to the bait so they can mouth the bait try and eat the bait but they're not actually getting on the hook and why that can be a key advantage is because sometimes 
when you're fishing for bigger fish, the bigger fish need a little bit more time to get to the bait. And if there's lots of small fish getting to the bait before the bigger fish, that can really have an impact on you selecting out or picking out those better fish. So if you've got a bait that you could present where, yes, the little fish are still gonna have a go at it because they're having a go at everything that you're putting in, but if they're not actually getting hooked, then by fishing a tough piece of worm or two or three pieces of worm, something that small fish can have a go at, then yes, they're still gonna be having a go at it, but they're not gonna be getting hooked. It just means that your, your bait is spending a little bit longer in the peg. And obviously when a bigger fish comes along because that's got a bigger mouth, when it sucks that bigger bait in, that's gonna be more inclined to suck the hook in as well. And hopefully that's gonna be the fish that you hook. So that is a key scenario when I love to use hair rigs. Well, I hope this has answered some of the questions that we get asked all the time. And if it has been of some use to you, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos on this channel, all about these sorts of methods and tactics, then don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.